live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Friday Night on Talk TV. I'm Mike Graham and this, of course, is a Plank of the Week. This is the show where you don't have to worry about judging anything because we do it all for you. And there's been much plankery going on this week. We've got loads and loads of great nominations. We've got a fantastic panel uh, with which to choose as well. Starting off with Esther Kraku, Peter Blexley, Georgie Frost and, of course, former First Minister of Scotland, Mr Alex Salmon. And we're all fighting, of course, for this, the Plank of the Week. And I'm sure... Uh, you'll agree with me that we should start off right with Esther Crackett. What's your first nomination, Esther? <laughs> the NHS. The NHS. Uh, uh, yeah. Brilliant. I mean, you win. Yeah, exactly. Um, because of, I, I mean, I actually I can't believe this is real. But the NH an NHS trust in Sussex released guidance saying that trans women's breast milk. Yes i.e. biological men that have been pu pumped with hormones that are somehow secreting some mystery liquid from yeah. their breasts. I don't even want it to know about that. It is as good as breast milk to, to breastfeed babies. Now, it, it's one thing... It clearly to, isn't as good, is Well, it? because the thing is, it's one thing to treat actual babies like guinea pigs, yeah. but it's another to pretend like this strange liquid that's being secreted for male breasts mm. is somehow edible. Or is there anything of value? Like, I, I, it's or so, consumerable. I swear, it's just weird. Has anyone tested what's in there? Yeah. I breastfed our kids. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, Light didn't. and bitter. <laughs> didn't do I mean, else. we've all, as fathers, had the bottle at night and done mm. the duty and done all that. And, I mean, even that is no substitute for, for breastfeeding, yeah. I'm afraid. So the idea that an actual NHS trust would say... This is just as good. It's well, we, we, we know that the NHS promotes breast, breastfeeding breast as best as they, they say. They call it chest feeding, I presume. Well, well I mean, NHS that's just... Oh, but the thing, but to, 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 to go... Are you so desperate to promote breastfeeding that you're literally going to promote some mystery liquid from no, a, not, a man? No, 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 but they're not promoting breastfeeding, are they? They're promoting a mystery the liquid. alternative breastfeeding, which is not breastfeeding because it's trans. That's what they're promoting. Well, but the thing is, we don't even know what the, the secretion is. Yeah, what? Yeah, they're I mean, not, I don't even sure I want to know. Yet. They're just diminishing women's yeah, role in it exactly. by saying human feeding yes. yeah. rather than women breastfeeding. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, I mean, there's, it's a whole process. If you read about mm. the drugs you need to get pumped full of, right. it's a whole process. Has you have to grow checked? the breast tissue right. and then you have to start taking these drugs, which are linked, I think, with heart problems mm. and all sorts. Good so they're very goodness. untested. It's mm. very rare. Why on earth they're doing it? Sussex NHS, I think, says a lot yes. that it's in Sussex. Right. So they're quite it's Brighton. <laughs> they're quite pro on this, but yeah, yeah it does seem very, mm. as you said, but, uh, guinea just, pigs I mean, and babies. How, how yeah. do they know that this liquid is even safe? Well, this, the thing is, they don't, because right. if, they, if they had, if they've done extensive research on this, I'm pretty sure they would never even come out and say this, mm. because no one actually knows who has ever sat there and thought, I wonder what will come out of a biological man's boobs if I pumped him full of hormones. I'm glad you said that last bit because I wasn't sure what you were going to do there. But I mean, <laughs> the thing is, the NHS is in absolute crisis. In, and, you know, they should be concentrating on the proper things that they're supposed to do. My son had, had to, he's fine, he had to go to an A&E department in Manchester this week. He spent eight hours waiting there for somebody to see him. And that's the state yeah. of the NHS. Yeah. And that's completely normal. And the mm -hmm. description of the A&E hospital that he was in was unbelievable. There were people lying on the floor, bleeding, yeah. people vomiting into buckets. My God. You know, I mean, it was. It sounded like a scene from, you know, some horrific, you know, medieval swamp, you know? And that's the proper... That's what the NHS should be doing. But did they ask him his pronouns? Um, like, that's you know, the I most didn't ask him thing, that. right? They probably you know? did. Yeah. I mean... But, I mean well, there you but go, that's fine, then. By the time they actually got to see him, he could have been dead, you know? I mean, <laughs> he what, didn't know so, what they were. Yeah, it's so... Just well, so out of kilter with I, reality. I emergency is to time when you go. Now, if you can just time your accident yeah. at certain times... Time your right, accident. Then you get, terrible. You know, <laughs> like terrible. So, so do all your dangerous things on a Monday or Tuesday yeah. morning. Well, he went at 2 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon on a weekday and he was there until 10 o'clock at night. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's not a very one. busy time. But anyway, so much for the NHS. Peter Blexley, what's your first one? Sadiq Carnage, Mayor of London. Right, yeah. That's <laughs> a surprise. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Once again, Mr. Khan has made the two. He's only, I think he's only missed one this, this year so far, Plank right. of the Week. Yeah, don't let it happen again. No, sorry. Right. Yeah. And, of course, the fourth plinth at Trafalgar Square. Yes. For the last 20 odd years or, or, or yeah. more. Why do they keep arguing about this? Well, it's a bit of a competition and, you know, you can express yourselves with new and modern art pieces on there. Yeah. They get to stay there for a couple of years mm. and then they swap them every now and again. Yeah. Well, bearing in mind how recently the late Queen passed away... Yes. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it was nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Right. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. So so he suggested 
Alternatives. Yes. Mm -mm. <laughs> There's a sweet potato. Excellent. That's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not going to take up much room, is it? I think it's an oversized one, but it, it's oh, okay. designed, apparently, to, so that people can learn about the difference between a sweet potato and a yam. Oh, yeah. Which may be important okay. for those who like a bit of cooking. All right. There's a, there's, a, there's a black cat. Right. Try doing that in Italy, Sadiq, and see how you get yeah, on. Yeah, right. That's unlucky, right. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that won't end Why up well. Why could it be well. a white cat? Yeah. Hey? And, and there's, other, black cat. there's other pieces of, of, of modern art. There's a nice green van from Bombay playing Bollywood oh, yeah. music. Don't yeah. forget that one. Looks yeah, like yeah. a tiger apparently, on top vomiting. Because apparently um, me, yeah. Uh, yeah. they invented ice cream in India. Yeah. That's what they reckon. Again, yeah. try that with the Italians. Yeah. They might not be very happy yeah. about that. I yeah. wouldn't do that in Sicily if I were you. No, exactly. Right. And, 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 and so the list goes on. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you for the reminding. A trans... Sex worker. Right. Right? I mean, you don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square because you've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. 40, 40 yards up the road, you can find a real trans prostitute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Near Chinatown. Why do you know this? Why, yeah. why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. You've interviewed people about Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I have to I've confess. Born and bred in London, you've got to know these things. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I have to confess, I do use a trans sex worker. Do you? But it's on her day off. Right. And she comes around and creosotes my fence. <laughs> Uh, and I've got to tell you, because she yeah. was a painter and decorator in a previous life. That's fine. And does a, and does a cracking job. Brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, there's no reason to suggest that she wouldn't do a cracking job. I yeah. mean, I can see where you're going with this. Are, but, are, you know, still, are the nominations still open? Like, I mean, I, I'm does anybody get to vote statue. on it? Do you know that the, the, the three most popular non-religious statues in the world are Queen Victoria, Christopher Columbus and Robert Burns. So could I nominate one of them for, for the mayor? To... Oh, aye. I'm so sure. City Khan, no, I'm sorry, trans prostitutes take the cake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the process of all of these things is ridiculous, a bit similar to when he named all those lines last week. You know, yeah, the, yeah uh, when it comes on the back yeah. of that £6 million worth of expenditure yes. to rename... Change some names. ..the London Overground, right. to give them new names, divvy them up, give them names... Uh, there's Windrush, Windrush yeah. Mild yeah. May and some others and all well, that. Somebody said to me, I'm just going to... Um, Make my way home now. I'm just going to jump on the suffragette. Yeah, which doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. also it kind of conjures up images of, yeah. of them throwing they themselves under so it. So hard just to get. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Yeah. To get him to lie. And we haven't got a Cockney line, have we? There's no Cockney line. I thought it's also could... no I'm pretty sure you know everyone would like just get rid of the N E Y. Someone will just. <laughs> Somebody suggested they should have the Palestine line. They should also have the where what? they shout free Palestine every mm. time. Every time the driver, you know, should be every line they should. Yeah. Although you wouldn't have to use your Oyster car because if it was a Palestine line. You could travel for free, Bob. Bob. There you go. Very good. And also, of course, they should have had the cocaine line because London is now the cocaine yeah, centre yeah. of the world. Is it yeah. actually? Yeah, line of cocaine. Mm. You know, get on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, all the way to Chelsea. <laughs> all the way to Chelsea and back. So the so, fourth plinth. Yeah. Uh... So when are they going to decide what goes on this fourth plinth? Soon. That's right. all I know. I mean, I watched I'm... a debate on this earlier on in the week with Talk TV, and, and there was a guy, an artist actually, who was very funny. He said, actually. Why would you want to be on display in Trafalgar Square? You're basically surrounded by a load of Chinese tourists, crack addicts, um, and hookers. Because well, Trafalgar I'm, Square I'm, is not pigeons. what it was. Pigeons who well, yeah, crap exactly. on you. Know, who crap and on pigeons you. who crap on you, yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Oh, we've got a clip of Sadiq. Um, we're going to call this um, Plank of the Sadiq. Here we go. I've not seen the transcripts, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that sort of language isn't acceptable, and it certainly shouldn't be acceptable in a party like mine uh, that is proud to be both anti-racist but also anti-Semitic. <laughs> Did you catch that? Yeah. Slip of the tongue. Uh, well, actually said the Labour Party was both anti-racist and anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> obviously didn't mean to say that, but we're just going to keep playing it. Well, we well, I mean, I, I mean, obviously, I'm the, in my compulsory role as the sole defender of Sadiq Khan, every time I'm on, he's always nominated. Yeah. I've actually thought of a great slogan uh, for his next election. Mm. It's going to be, Sadiq Khan, your city, your plank. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could well uh, be a success with that. We shall see. Right, uh, Georgie Frost, what's your one? Yeah, it's not often that I'll play, praise the rail unions, but I will this time for right. highlighting <laughs> Avanti, doing their bit for women of a certain age. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, because no, they're not very good at running trains, Avanti, are they? Oh, yeah, terrible. Absolutely yeah, terrible. No ignore chance. that, ignore yeah. that. Because if you are a woman of a certain age mm. going through menopause or perimenopause you, and you work for Avanti, you can get... A gift bag. Think oh, really? like a kiddies party. Okay. Like, what's in this gift bag, you, you ask? There is... I'm I've had to write it down, by the way, because I'm a woman of a certain age and yeah. I might forget. A pencil mm. right. to write down things you might forget. Uh. Of course, I'm talking about menopause here. Um, a fan, ideal for hot sweats. A paperclip. 
to help you keep things together. A tissue in case you're feeling a bit emotional, uh -huh. women. And a jelly baby in case you feel like biting someone's head off. Like your manager, oh, maybe, and here we who go. gave you this. Tim is uh, just behind you there. He's got some gift bags for like, all of us. Ignoring mm -hmm. the fact that the menopause mm -hmm. is Thank you, Tim. completely, for some women, debilitating. 10% of women leave the workplace at that age. 25% think about it. Right. It's linked to things like osteoporosis, dementia, diabetes, heart problems, all mm. sorts of issues. But don't worry, if you work for Avanti, you get a gift bag. They said... Oh, but it was designed by the people who work for us in the menopause support group. Oh, yes, yeah. but probably because women are so used to having to make a joke out of women's issues. This is how low we've got. Bite off the heads of uh, your jelly a baby. A jelly baby. Do you feel better, lad? I ate the I whole do. thing. Yeah. Go on. Oh, dear. I'm, she's a, I'm, a, I'm a manager. Yeah, she's yeah. in it. Uh, got it. Can you up just this show's going very well so can far. Can you up just <laughs> <now> five <laughs> jelly babies? Yeah, but also, just have you noticed what's pencil, missing from the, from the goodie bag? Yeah. They've got a paper clip. For your paper, mm. they've got a pencil for you to write your things down. Yeah. But there's no paper. No, so quite, you'd be quite, driven quite. insane because you'll go, Where's the bloody paper? That you can't make, write anything down by the time worse. you find the paper, you've forgotten what you wanted to write down. It's, yeah, it's true, but you can you can bite your jelly baby. Uh, I, I just think it's That's absolutely ridiculous. ludicrous. But we got some um, information out from the Equality and Human Rights Commission today, which was saying that workplaces have a duty of care to women who are going through it and they need to show them certain flexible working, etc. And they've likened it to a disability. <sighs> it's not a yeah. disability. Well, they're using... Can we, it's called life, we isn't it? The reasonable adjustments clause um, that's meant to... Um, for can we dis promote dis policies that encourage women to search out <sighs> ways in which that they can go through this, you know, HRT, right. for example, GPs that actually have to have training yeah. in this, yeah. and yeah. good workplace policies, not goodie bags. Don't get me wrong, I like a good jelly baby. Are you right? going to have it? Do you want it? We've no, 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 no. Only, no. only if you don't want it, then I'll offer it to Esther. But you know, you know the most ludicrous. Uh, yeah, I am a man eater. But yeah. uh, there were, there oh, were, I, like I, knew, I knew of um, someone who went to a conference and she said there were companies that were trying to recruit women. They were, I think they were on this diversity binge. And they literally handed out potential female candidates, they handed them um, nail files. Mm, um, right. That were that was supposed to be just just to the women candidates because they're like we appreciate you we want to get more hire more women so they just handed them nail files as kind of like an incentive like yeah come and work for me because... it's a bit condescending well yeah, literally and I'm like these are women with PhDs yeah mm. and now they have and a PhD files. and a nail file and a nail file <laughs> and, and, and still yeah. you'll like, notice no paper can well, say no exactly paper. Paper. they're not giving any paper I don't, I don't know if these are Avanti jelly babies but there's nothing wrong with these jelly babies they're excellent yeah, they're good I see they're in a waitress well I'm allowed to say they're in a waitress bag yeah well I've got some good news suspicious. for you um, because we've got a little jelly babies advert for you check this out That's quite creepy, isn't it? Mm, it is. It's uh, just that's to end 1959, this, that. The equality. When women were women and men were men. men exactly. Ex exactly. And men didn't have boobs look, with breast milk. <laughs> in in defence of all this, look, uh, anything that talks about the menopause is great because we've gone for too long where we're not talking about it. You and keep I do saying think it's, women keep saying important. this. It's all I ever hear about is the bloody menopause. <laughs> I, you know, oh, I can't believe There's a lot about of it menopause. at the minute. There's have a you lot of it. put Radio 4 on? Put Radio 4 on once in a while. Let's talk about the big taboo today. Oh, what? Is it uh, the menopause? So this is the yeah. point. It's like it's the... It's the conversation du jour where companies yeah. can now jump on the menopause oh, bandwagon. Yeah. What about please? the men of the menopause? When right, where's menopause? their goodie bags but with Viagra? Their, well, you know? Where's, no, but, no, they don't necessarily need down. the Viagra. They just need some peace and quiet from the woman with the menopause. Ooh. You know, where do they get some help? Well, if also there's any Viagra going, I'll have it. You go through a menopause. <laughs> Anything for a jelly baby is all I can say. <laughs> anyway, on to Mr. Alex Salmond and I think possibly uh, the man of the week. Oh, more than the week. This is the Burach of the year. Burach, uh, uh, great This word. is the, the common speaker, Lindsay Hoyle. I mean, we've heard the rest, now you're the best. I mean, the House of Commons is settling down to have a debate on a very important issue, the slaughter in Gaza. Finally, hopefully, uh, standing up and saying it's time to stop the, the murder of innocents. But what happens? Lindsay Hoyle, at the very last minute, gets visited, a visitation for, from Sir Keir Starmer. Mm who persuades them, but not threatens, no. we're told, but persuades them uh, to abandon all Commons procedure and call the Labour amendment first. Yes. Thereby relieving him of the strain of having another hundred rebellion right. and all sorts of people resigning from the front bench. Uh, now, this was being done, the, the, the meeting, which was... There was no threats, no threats at all. No, no. <laughs> also, we should point out that Labour <coughs> at first denied that they had even bothered to see 
uh, Lindsay Hoyle. They, they, they denied that anyone from Labour had actually talked to I know, but they've none denied that. Right. So while this is going on, Labour MPs are, are, are having a filibuster to, to stop the, the debate yeah. starting. Right. So you're probably giving a clue that something was going on behind the scenes. Uh. And then in comes Lindsay to announce he's breaking with all Commons procedures mm. on the SNP's supply day, yeah. uh, basically to get Labour off the hook. Yes, uh, well, let me just stop you there. Gonna, breaks out. We're going to watch how this unfolds. So here's what happened. Which restricts... Which restricts... Order! Order! Oh. You'll be going and not be voting. You won't yeah. be voting. Well, it's that's the voice, that's It's true. the voice of calm authority yes. that you get from the chair. And the, what makes it worse is he, the speaker, after committing this, you know, he has act in terms of Commons procedure, causing total chaos, yeah. a complete breakdown of order and the debate. The debate itself wasn't bad, actually. Uh. But when they came to voting and people realised it was all a big fiddle, then, you know, <laughs> riots broke out, people walked out, yeah. and the whole thing left the House of Commons looking like a bunch of chumps. Yeah. But where was Lindsay Hoyle when this was happening? Nowhere to be no. seen. He sent in his female deputy speakers right. to try and calm the and troubled Stephen waters. And Stephen Flynn from the SNP demanded that he show his face, didn't he, to explain several times, what happened. Several times, several yeah. times. <laughs> looking where, you know, one of our speakers is missing, mm. and since they only have one, <laughs> this is a bit of a right. problem. So uh, he, he's managed to... He's managed to project the Commons in the worst possible way. He's managed to... Any reasonable person will say, why are we letting these people decide on anything or, or yeah, call well, for anything? that's what the country's actually saying. Even yeah. Lady Moran said it was embarrassing. That tells yeah, you how it bad was, it was. But because they caused the uh, embarrassment. They, you know, people... I was quite... I thought the most interesting thing was some of the Tory MPs were, were shouting, bring back Berko. Yes. <laughs> they, they, never, they never liked John Berko. No. But, but there were two things about John Berko. All right, he went on a bit. But, you know, he knew his Commons rules. Yeah. And he had guts. Right. Lindsay Hall He also has controlled neither. the chamber in a way that this guy didn't. Here he is when he came back in, finally, sort of weepingly apologising. I thought I was doing the right thing and the best thing, and I regret it, and I apologise for how it's ended up. I do take responsibility for my actions, and that's why I want to meet... And that's why I want to meet with the key players who have been involved. Well, I mean, he sounds players. on the verge of tears there. Well, he's I mean, playing, just, he's playing at being so, speaker. Yeah. It's so pathetic. Like, this is... We're not a serious country. No. I mean, they're having... There's all this this huge fiasco of a vote which realistically will not affect things in the middle. Mm. I mean, if they really wanted to actually impact this, they would, like, I don't know, put sanctions on Israel or whatever. They wouldn't have this meaningless vote over a country that's not Britain. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the yeah. fundamental issue. This is, mm. this is just a huge exercise in virtue sing signalling when there are actually real issues right. in this problem, uh, real problems exactly. in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all, actually. I know. I, 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 think, that that I, I a... think this is an issue uh, the Commons should debate and decide upon. Well, they're obviously held. We're not going to get caught up. The, the reason that Netanyahu is, is acting like he's been doing is because he's been allowed to get away with it by the international community. And it's time to call... Yeah, well, we're not, hang on. We're not the having the that conversation here. This is plank of the week. Bloody questions. The way that the debate was worded was an almost impossible bind for... The Labour Party would have turned them in on themselves. Yeah. What's the issue? Is Lindsay Hoyle came out and said we there was concern over the safety of MPs. Yeah. That's why he made the yeah. decision. Well, because of but threats that may or may not be that may or may not yeah. Palestine. So the concern is either he's in the throes of, of the Labour leader and does what he says, or we're in the throes of people who are threatening MPs right. in the country. Either way, send them to jail. Either, yeah, exactly. Of course. Which, but which, hang which on. is the worst possible reason. Yeah, you're, now, you're now saying we'll have our democratic debates depending on whether M MPs feel threatened but I outside. Think, hang I on. Mean, that's ridiculous. But I think, I think that what the Parliament uh, this week has shown is that they're not capable of having debates about important things like what's happening in Gaza mm. and they should stick to just throwing insults at each other about swimming pools because they're completely incapable. But there was a time in years gone by when they had some better MPs. Have a look at this. <laughs> Order. 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 One second. A point of order, Mr. Sum. It's quite clear that the Honourable Lady had not resumed her seat, sir. Being in the chair accords you many privileges, but you cannot reinterpret the wishes of an Honourable Member who is on her feet. There you go. That was telling. Uh, uh, what he was yeah. doing there was telling Joanna Cherry, a learned uh, KC, uh, uh, somebody of uh, great intelligence, to sit down in the middle of a speech because he decided he wanted to hear from the government. He yeah. has no power to do that. No. But the problem is that Lindsay may be a nice man, 
but he doesn't know Commons' procedure, which is kind of important yeah. if you're meant to be chairing And listen, by the time you're watching this show, uh, he may be out of a job, or may not, but uh, certainly uh, a lot of lack of confidence in him going forward. Coming up uh, in the next bit, uh, I'm going to be giving you a couple of nominations. I'm going to be talking to you um, about Birmingham City Council, and also uh, we'll hear about the Metropolitan Police. They've made the list again this week. This is Plank of the Week. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Uh, we've already had very, very good nominations, four very strong contenders for the win. Uh, but I'm going to bring you my first one, and it is, of course, Birmingham City Council. Birmingham City Council, which not long ago declared itself completely bankrupt as a result of its... Um, completely mismanaged finances, basically. Uh, they had some IT programme which they spent £85 million on, which apparently didn't work. Uh, they've also had to actually apply for bankruptcy uh, protection. But now they've decided they're going to put the council tax up by 21% because that's the only way they can pay for all of the mistakes that they've made in the past. They have to call a vote on it, surely. Uh, well, they don't, actually, because they've been given special yeah. permission, apparently, to do it. Mm -hmm. um, they want to make £300 million in budget savings, and as a result of which, uh, they're going to dim the streetlights, right, to be in, in line with the councillors, mm -hmm. who are also pretty dim. Uh, they're also going to make sure um, that they don't pick up your rubbish very often either, uh, and they're going to cut back on all sorts of actually quite important stuff like social care, mm. you know, looking after the elderly, looking after kids. The bins that used to be collected once a week will now be collected once every, well. every fortnight. Um, and they'll basically not fix the roads, they won't fix anything else, they probably won't cut the grass, you know, they'll basically fall into disrepair and they think the answer is to just charge everybody. And if you think about 21, say, say people are paying, I think, on average now, £2,000 yeah. a year or something. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Cost I mean, of living crisis. Cost of living oh, crisis. Oh, whack the old council. But how, are, hold on, how, are they, how have they been given special permission to just do this? That's the law. Well, because there's a few, the few, because a few they, councils can if you if, apply for if it. They're it's allowed, to, was one yeah, of because them, if they're allowed to go into bankruptcy and they therefore cease to trade, they cease to exist, they won't be picking up any of the bins, they won't be putting on any of the lights, and they won't be really a functioning council at all. Well, then that's good. They might yeah. fail and start over again. Well, that would be a good idea. That would be my suggestion. What, with another bunch of councillors? Right? I mean, what were the thing is that, that don't have the amount of power to spend so flagrantly. That's, that's the solution. It's not allowing them to just in increase council tax or uh, to provide worse service. I mean, that's, that's ludicrous. One of their big problems is paying for, a, is it sexism case or...? Yeah, well, it was the equal about pay. It was, equal yeah, pay but this case. was something that went all the way back to Tony Blair's time mm. when councils were told that, you know, they needed to pay equally spending, men and women uh, in the same job, which all got a bit turned around. I think Alex probably will know this, when mm. it wasn't just the same job that they talked mm. about. They started comparing different jobs and saying, well, hang on, if a woman's doing that job over there, why isn't she making the same as that over there? And so they, the sort of socialists were hoisted by their own petard because they wanted to pay over the same amount of money. They then realised that because they weren't doing it, it would cost an absolute fortune to make it up. But the good news is that Deborah Cadman, who's the chief executive of Birmingham City Council, earns about £250,000 a year, which, of course, is more than the Prime Minister. Um, <laughs> and there'll be plenty of other people on the council earning six-figure salaries. I mean, maybe they could take a 10% pay cut. Just a suggestion. I mean, I think, How I think does the it overarching point... with Sadiq Khan? That's what we want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, actually. I don't think he gets massive amounts. Well, there you of are, then. See, yeah, what it, is his salary? I don't know, Let's but it's, I, don't Sadiq. Think it's, I don't think it's above sort of 250. I don't think yeah. so. I, I wouldn't pay him 10p, but... No. Okay. I mean, there was point about local government. I mean, Hong Kong, uh, for many years, <laughs> uh, basically had, well, very, very low tax indeed. And they actually funded Hong Kong from one source of revenue, which was selling land, yeah. which was incredibly scarce in, in Hong Kong. And the, the, as a crown colony, they owned the land and they sold the land and that was their main source of revenue. Now, I, I can't help but think that Birmingham Council must have some land holdings, and as the second city of, uh, of England, they might want to have a look at these land holdings and see if they could follow in the Hong Kong Alex, example. Alex, you're suggesting I don't, using you know, common sense. I no, don't I think, think they, that, no, that doesn't they, really... They, really... they love to fall back on the, let's just charge the ordinary people. This woman, Cadman, by the way, earns 12 times what the lowest paid full-time worker takes home at the council, which is 20,744 quid. Um, her salary ballooned almost by a third last year, and she's now getting eight times more than the council's it's average salary. It's so 250 grand a year, mm. that's kind of five grand a week, yeah. a grand a day. Yeah. For what? To uh, run it into the for ground. For running right? it into the ground. Do you know how much they spent on uh, that equal pay claim? 1.1 billion. Uh, they spent 760 million 
uh, when uh, they basically had to settle even more equal pay claims. Um, their immediate budget shortfall this year is 87 million. Mate, These people can't like you. You're coming along. <laughs> you're coming along with this array of facts. Yes. What's happened to you? This well, because you know, amazing I just thought, transformation. You, <laughs> I just thought you might be interested well, in facts they, on this particular issue. They should, be allowed, they should be allowed to go bankrupt because this is a similar argue, argument that we use for for banks, right? Mm. Why are we bailing out? Well, no, because businesses. it's a public service that the no, bank but the thing is, is not. It's, it's a business because banks still make profits. If you if you're a business and you're going to make profits, then you should take the risk. And if you make a loss, no, listen, I'm with you on banks. You let them fall, but you can't but let banks the council don't provide go children's I, services. No, old is, how, do you, services. how do you disincentivize bad behavior? Yeah, well, can I make a second common sense suggestion? Go on. Given the 250,000 quid, how about if they advertise for suitably qualified candidates mm -hmm. for somebody who wanted the job as chief executive and gave it to the lowest bidder? That's a very good idea. Well, let's well, have a look at like one of their like adverts really. because we've got it here. If you're thinking of organizing a community cleanup, we're here to help. Ask your friends, family, and neighbors. Use social media and community notice boards to advertise your event. Whether it's five hours or five minutes, every bit helps. We can provide you with equipment. Our litter picking kit includes high visibility vests, litter pickers and refuse bags. Maybe they could save some money by not giving everyone a high visibility vest. And things are so bad, as you can see in Birmingham now, that picking up litter collectively is an event. But I noticed no jelly babies. No jelly babies. Well, well they've obviously missed the trick. Think, get they've missed the trick. They've also said they're not going to pick up litter anymore. I think the answer here is obvious. You have to cut back on some of the services that you offer. But the thing is, they're not willing to do that. So they're actually just well, willing to charge people more for But the trouble service. is, they will be cutting back on some of the services they shouldn't be yeah. cutting back on. But anyway, well, never mind. Over to you yeah. for the next one. So my, my nomination, my next nomination, is the uh, National Multiple Sclerosis Society yes. for firing a 90-year-old volunteer mm. who has been volunteering with the society for 60 years because right. she had a member of staff ask her to use her pronouns, her preferred pronouns in an email. Right. And she was like, what is that? What? Right. what? She and she's, and she's 90, <laughs> mind you. And they were like, that is not part of the inclusive attitude we have here at the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, which is a mouthful. Um, so they fired her. That's ridiculous. Uh, someone who's given 60 years of her life yeah. uh, volunteering for this organization. And the thing is, if with, you don't with laugh... With no re regard for money or anything like well, that. It's like the Susan Hussey thing. Uh, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. Because it, it just beggars belief. Why would a 90-year-old person who's lived a life of like almost like basically like a century mm. be bothered about what pronouns are? Yeah. I mean, I don't want my kids to know no. it because it's nonsense. Also, try and explain it to somebody who just landed here from Mars and you go, what's your pronoun? <laughs> exactly. And once yeah. you start explaining it to <laughs> exactly. them, they go, sorry? Let's go what? back. We need to go back. <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. What are your pronouns? They're there. They're there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I mean, it's ridiculous. But she was, she was fired. Right. Like, they, they didn't even... Like, That's nonsensical. They have apologised since and I think she's allowed back, but I'm not sure if she's... Well, sure. nobody's going yeah, to talk she's been on a bit of diversity, equality... Yeah, exactly. She needs to do some training. She's yeah. allowed back to volunteer. Right. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. How generous. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How this is, the, this is how mad the world has become. You know, they you're now banning like... people who want to do good because they said something that you didn't like. But the thing is, the person who was offended by this, do they have? Do they not have a brain? How can Obviously you look not. at a 90 year old person and be like, this person is really interested in what my pronouns yeah. are? She probably doesn't even know your first name, let alone your no. pronouns. No, diversity is leading to more and more division. It is. Mm, yeah. It really is. Yeah. And also, surely diversity, if you were to analyse what it means, as opposed to what they want it to mean, means mm. everyone, doesn't it? Yeah, that yeah. doesn't actually mean excluding people because you it, don't agree with it. Is it but diversity or is it just stupidity is yes. leading it, to more and more right. division? It's, sorry, it's a relentless imposition of diversity. Yeah. That is what is creating mm. division. Yeah. People will get on. You don't need a book. You don't need it rammed down right. your throat. Right. People will get on in the workplace. Yeah. They, but, they just have to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's already told us. You, I'm asking. I'm being asked what your pronoun is. You just said. There, there, there. There, there. Yeah. there we are. <laughs> and over yeah. to you. You've got a woke story for us. Yeah, although just on a slightly appalling note, in the same week that another Metropolitan Police officer gets convicted for multiple rapes, including on a child, right. moving on, it is the Metropolitan Police. And I nominate them because, yet again, and this story will chime with many, many people, they have not done their job. Mm. So a lady uh, called Alexandra, she owns a very nice Lexus motor car and unfortunately she wakes up one morning and it's been nicked. Right. <laughs> and so she calls the police yeah. and gets a lamentable kind of response. Uh, but she has a tracker on this car because it's a modern right. car. Many of them do. Yeah. 
and uh, and the police say, well, go and find it then. <laughs> right? OK, <laughs> go on. And if you know where it is, pop along there. Right. Um, don't approach the car if there's anybody in it. Oh, thanks for the crime prevention right. advice, Excellent. Metropolitan Police. Yeah. You know, but basically, off you trot. It's your problem. Yeah. Which is what's happening there. all the time now. Now, I yeah. live in the Met Police uh, motor crime hotspot, yeah. right? Don't have a car down my way. It's half decent. Yeah. It gets nicked. OK. Right? And, of course, this has happened to this lady. So, yet again, the Met Police refuse to do their job, refuse to help a victim of crime, and they released this mealy-mouthed statement that didn't have anything mm. to do by way of admitting that they did nothing, of course. Yeah. And so, once again, the ever-failing Metropolitan Police is my nomination. Brilliant. And did they, do you think, write this down or tick a box and say that is a crime that was committed in London so that it goes well, on you to mean the stats? It? No. Or would they not record it? I suspect because the owner found her own car, they'll probably show it as solved. Mm. Actually, if you Google it, though, it's not the only one. There's other cases of oh. Essex police Well, well. most people who have their houses yeah. burgled um, don't see the police at all. My favourite story but, was somebody who actually rang me once and told me the story that they reported to the police when they came home from holiday, 7.30 at night, that their house had been burgled, and they got a call from the police at 9.30 at night to say the case had been closed, and they hadn't even come around. Lovely. They just had opened wow. the case and shut it and gone unsolved. Let me tell you another recent story about the Met, if yeah. I may. The Met is divided up into 12 borough commands, yeah. OK? And it has an officer in charge of each 12. They're called a borough commander. They're not a commander, they're a chief superintendent. Stick with me, mm. right? Yeah. So the Met called this meeting of all 12 leaders of those boroughs. Yeah. So the 12 chief superintendents gather together. Seven... Like the Last Supper. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The Last Super. Yeah, right, right? very good. I like yeah. it. Seven of those 12 chief superintendents yeah. entered the police as direct entry superintendents. Really? So, in essence... So they've never done the job? They know diddly squat about policing. Amazing. If you want to launch any kind of investigation, specialist operation, resources, or just knowing how the front line works, they ain't got a scooby. Right. Let's have a look at the wokest police chief you've ever seen. I would like to apologise to Scotland's blind community. I hear your concerns. And I promise you, they will not fall on deaf ears. I would like to apologise to the deaf community. I would like to say sorry. When I realised what I'd said, I honestly, I had a fit. I apologise unreservedly to all of the epileptics in Scotland for my use of the word fit. I, I completely understand why you've got to be in your bonnet. Tragically, um, that's probably more true to life than you than would not, think. Yeah. It really is. I mean, only this week we saw the words from the river to the sea um, actually projected onto Big Ben on the Houses of Parliament on the night of the vote uh, that we were talking about a little bit earlier. And the police just stood by and watched. It's meant to be illegal, but they didn't do anything. Never mind. Uh, coming up next, we've got loads more for you. Uh, of course, we're going to be talking about a big shop that lots of people have heard of, and Mr Salmon's been in another argument. Or a stramash, <laughs> as you might say. This is Bank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's Friday night. This is, of course, Talk TV, the one place you need to be. We're going to be finding out exactly who's going to win it uh, in a short period of time. Georgie Frost, what's your final nomination? It's John Lewis. John Lewis. Yep. For yeah. their staff magazine. It's called Identity. It goes out to 70,000 staff members. And mm. you might expect it to include, you know, I don't know, how to check your pension, perhaps, or dates of the summer fair, yeah. or indeed information about redundancy rights, because right. they're talking about making a load of them redundant. Mm. No, 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 no. This was produced by their LGBTQIA plus group. I think you missed a few letters there. Yeah. The plus, I think, covers it all. So <laughs> hopefully I'll be all right. Can't Except you just say plus then? And then yeah, just exactly. get rid the of all the other letters. Group. Okay, they're, they're plus just network. Plus. That's a fair point, fair point, fair point. Uh, it has advice on pronouns, which yeah, we course. do need, yeah. um, especially the lady that works for the MS Society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, dates for your calendar, not right. the summer fair, but the International Day of Trans Visibility. Yeah, that's um, a good one. The International Asexual Day. Right. That's the thing. And plenty more besides. There was a word search as well yeah. for LGB plus uh, terms as well. <laughs> imagine put, imagine he's putting this stuff together. Oh, it's so useful, so useful, so useful. <laughs> when you're worried about your job, this is so useful. Um, 
But what was perhaps more worrying here is that they were also promoting chest binders, presumably not in their haberdashery department. No. Um, and also <laughs> tips from the Mermaid Charity, which obviously is being investigated currently by the bit Charity controversial. Commission. A little bit controversial yeah. as well. I mean, bearing in mind, John Lewis, the place your mother goes to get a kettle. Right. Is Never knowingly undersold. Not that? anymore. Famous <laughs> for... Pot called Kettle. Fantastic service of its, of, its, of its workers, its staff, yeah. proud to be yeah. owning... Partners. Exact, partners, mm. exactly, members owning the company. They used to have their own hotel down off the coast the last, of Sandbanks in um, you know, Dorset. The last few years have been an absolute disaster. And mm. Dame Sharon quite came, I mean, before that, to be fair, but she's cut no idea of Has growth. Has she gone, hasn't she? No, well, so she is leaving, yeah. but not until February 2025. Oh. I think they so, should get rid of her sooner. To be well, they did vote, and actually they voted to keep her for the second time. But look, either way, the atmosphere there is not great. They've had to say to their staff members recently, don't write on the internal forum and give us abuse. Right. Because of all, these, <laughs> these, all this talk about redundancy, they've also right. talked about taking it private, which takes it completely right. away from what John Lewis... What you go to John Lewis for is good service, good customer right. service, good products, a little bit more expensive. Bed sheets, get... that kind of thing. And Waitrose as well. Let's not forget Waitrose. We've got yeah. our little plastic bags yes. with our jelly babies there from yeah. Waitrose. I'm waiting for the closing down sale. Mm. Might be a it few bars. Be yeah, and we might not have to wait very long. Yeah. Is this really what staff are wanting to read about? Mm. A word search on dead naming. Go yeah. broke, Do you know what that broke. means? I don't, I don't. Oh, yeah, no. I know what dead naming is. Calling a trans person by their old name. Ha! Oh, uh, you would have passed this really well. So you've well. been doing this too long. I do, I do, yeah. I mean, it's I, I so think I got it from... Um, is dead naming a criminal offence? <laughs> I mean, it is mad. Here's, uh, it will be soon. His oh. therapist, James Esses, who's the guy that kind of uncovered this, talking to Julie Hartley Brewer about some of the other things he found in the magazine. You know, there was a list of dates to watch out for, you know, over the course of the year. We didn't see, uh, didn't see Mother's Day or Father's Day listed, but what was listed was Pansexual and Panromantic Visibility Day. You what? What? Um, sorry? So, you you know. what? What? Is that, have I, let, me, let me get that in my diary. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't even do... I'm sorry. I don't do Pride Month. I don't do Black History Month. I'm sorry. I'm just not I'm not playing along with this madness anymore. Shocking. Um, and that's, and, and that's yeah. so what Julie Hartley Brewer just said is considered controversial. No, no, Julie <laughs> that's contained hilarious. herself rather well there. She so did, that's actually. The, that's, the, that's the most calm I've seen her for a long time. Pansexual... Um, Panromantic visibility. Yeah. yeah, that's one for Layla Moran. She's pansexual. What is that? Pansexual and panromantic. Well, well, pansexual is you basically have sex with anything, I think. Panromantic, no, you're sexually attracted to panromantic. What, a full cool container or something? Yeah, it could be. could right. be anything you like. <laughs> if you could find one. <laughs> you know, they're a bit old, though. Oh I mean, where do you get a young full I mean, Can you, I, I obviously not in your neck of the woods. They've been stolen. Pimp my ride. Literally. I mean, Jesus. Um, sorry, you're not supposed to say that, are you? Um, Alex, on to you. Um, you've, you've been back in the news this week. I mean, not that I you're not in the news so. every week. But, I mean, I you so. were actually appearing in Westminster. Yeah, I, I, so I dashed over to appear in front of this, uh, this select committee of Scottish Affairs who, who were meant to be asking me about my relationships as First Minister with Gordon Brown and David Cameron right. and whether we got on, whether we were chums, what the organisation was. Uh, and this, this guy called... Uh, well, I think, it, well, I was going to say his friends call him Doogie, but if it doesn't have any. So <laughs> if he did have any friends, they'd call him Doogie Ross, who apparently leads the Scottish Tories these right. days. He started to ask me about... There are not many of them, is there? He started to ask me about the ferry disaster in Scotland. The only problem was it had nothing to do with intergovernmental relations and it had nothing to do with me since it was after I left office. <laughs> and I kept trying to tell him, I said, you know, you've got your time scale wrong. Mm. And he ploughed on and then well, he, he great, accused is... me of nationalising it, right. which happened five years after I left right. office. So, obviously, I, I must have been planning ahead. Well, who knew you were a, a time traveller? But, but we've got the clip here, and uh, this is a great example of a politician uh, not knowing when to stop digging. Did drug deaths increase? Oh, I, I did, want, did, I want, did you, drug to, I want Sorry, you to chair. acknowledge, did, Douglas, did. that your assumption about my involvement in the ferry contracts was incorrect. It's manifestly incorrect. I won't ask you to apologise, because you're not a minister. I'm sure you're not deliberately misleading the committee. I just want you to acknowledge that your memory had failed you. Well, I'm going to speak about education. No, no, I, I want you to well, acknowledge first. I, I, no, 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 well, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do that. Uh, well, you're good. Mr. Salmond, Mr. Mr. Salmond... Actually, that's not the clip I thought it was, but there's an earlier clip where he just well, keeps battering on and on <laughs> and on. But what about when you did this? And, and he goes, well, no, that wasn't, that wasn't around. And what about when this happened? No, 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 I'd left by then. The day, you know, the day that Doogie's ferry comes in, he'll be at the airport. 
Yes. I mean, I imagine he'll be missing most of the journeys that he has to make because he just gets the times wrong. Mm. He is, yeah. It was a great example, though. And what was, I mean, what was the end result of all of that? I mean, what was the reason they wanted to know whether you got on with Gordon Brown uh, uh, anyway? Well, no, that, that, but that was a perfectly legitimate reason because the, the, the structures, when, when I came in as first minister, I found that all the committees that were meant to be meeting, with the sole exception of a European committee, weren't meeting. In fact, Jack Straw, who was Foreign Secretary, told me he assumed all the other committees, like First Minister to, to Prime Minister, were meeting, because his ones were meeting, just, but none of them had been met for five years. Right. And I had the adventurous idea of reintroducing them, so that Prime Minister spoke occasionally to, to First Ministers, and then it actually worked quite well. It worked well for you know seven, eight years, and then it fell into disrepair again. So they, they went back to shouting each other down the phone or, right. or not meeting and each other. And presumably they don't meet at the moment because Hamza Yusuf is too busy going off on holiday to Qatar, isn't he? What Hamza's <laughs> ideas are? <laughs> like, Lexley's right. right. Let's go to a break. I think Let's go to a break. I, I think we should make Hamza chief superintendent. <laughs> <Are we saying? laughs> Listen, um, you know, you've been on TV enough this week, I think, Mr. Sutton. Um, coming up next, though, we're going to have a go at somebody in the government uh, and it's not David Cameron, surprisingly. Enough. It's the Blake of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're almost in the final furlong, and this is my final nomination before we decide exactly who should be the winner. Um, and you will not be surprised this week to know that it's the Royal Navy, because, of course, we've had all sorts of uh, rows about um, diversity and inclusion in the armed forces, because apparently Grant Shapps has decided uh, that he wants to have a review, because he thinks that the, the, the army and the navy and the air force have been taken over by the wokists and and the, equality, please. And please the, don't forget yeah, equality. Yeah. And they've decided to start kind of you know reducing the requirements for certain um, recruitment factors. So, for example, if you're coming from an ethnic minority, you might not have to pass quite so many tests, or if you're coming from the plus community, whatever that is, yeah. um, you might get in a bit easier, mm. you know. And as a result, unfortunately, um, they've sort of forgotten how to do what they're supposed to do, which is go around the world killing people. Um, <laughs> and uh, the Royal Navy decided that they should test one of their uh, ballistic missiles out of a submarine. They only do it once every eight years, amazingly, mm. right? And so they went off to Florida last month in an exercise with the HMS Vanguard. More facts for you, mm -hmm. Alex. And, um, and fired this missile and... Um, it didn't really work very well. Um, it, it went out of the submarine. They were happy with that. And they actually said, <laughs> the good part about this is that it did leave the submarine, <laughs> which you'd sort of hope it would, right? Uh -huh. And then the next good bit was that it actually then made it to the surface of the water, which mm. was also good. Yeah. Um, it then went up in the air, as it was meant to. Another positive. But unfortunately, not very far up uh. in the air. Um, and basically came straight back down again, mm. right on top of the submarine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> having not exploded and having not gone anywhere near where it was meant to go. Well, it's a good job it didn't explode, really. <laughs> yeah. It is a good job it you didn't know. explode. And, of course, they said, but don't worry, because if we do a real one, it will definitely work. And well, I'm going, well, 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 well how is the logic to, to base that as on? As a deterrent, it's Because, not you know, very... the last time they fired it, which was eight years ago, <laughs> the last time they fired one... Eight years ago, that didn't work either. Well, it went off course towards yeah. the US. Yes. They had to yeah. shoot it down. Shoot it it was down. going home. So out of the two <laughs> recent like firings of, of missiles mm. from submarines, at a time when the world is in a very dangerous place, where we might actually need yeah. submarines in the Royal Navy, both of them have failed. Not miserably. much of a deterrent, See, I, is it? I wonder if they put 12 pints of lager and six tequilas in the fuel tank. Because the last time I drank that amount, my rocket didn't work either. Uh, very good. I see what you did there. Um, thank you very much indeed for lowering the tone. But actually, I'm not going to make it the Royal Navy because I think the Royal Navy have been, unfortunately, hidebound. We talked earlier about David Cameron. David Cameron was responsible with that horrible little git, George Osborne, who was his chancellor. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, uh, to, for cutting all of the money that, that you might know a bit about this because because the submarines are all based in Scotland. Aren't no, they? We're not going to get the polis to nod off again. But no. I, my complaint about the Royal Navy, right? They took Grant Sharps to the middle of the Atlantic, and then they brought him back. Again. Well, <laughs> you've, you've actually, yeah, you've actually ruined the joke because my point was going to be that I'm not nominating the, the, the Royal Navy because the whole point of the story is that Grant Sharps was on the bloody submarine. So he's obviously a jinx. This is a guy <laughs> where everything he touches turns to the... He's got the opposite of the Midas touch. I can't say what it turns to, but you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. You know, feces will be one way of describing yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who, when he was Transport Secretary, went to Spain just before <coughs> uh, the government announced that there would be no travel to Europe during COVID. And he was actually stuck in Spain. And he was in the Cabinet 
which decided that they were going to do it. I don't understand. He's a, he's a wee bit of fairy addition. Uh, General de Gaulle, when French president, was once asked where the, the, the frappe francais was aimed at, where mm. the French nuclear missiles were aimed at, yeah. and he said, tout le monde, everybody. Right. And literally, it's true yeah. as far as Triton's concerned. They've right. got no <laughs> bloody idea where they've gone. <laughs> they've got no idea. And of course, they say, of course, well, it must be uh, it must be that they'll work when we really need to use them. Well, <laughs> it's not really very reassuring, is it? Well, when we do need them, there'll be total world obliteration anyway, so no one will give yeah. them monkeys. I mean, I think Alex Hammond might win just for saying they should have left Grant Shutts where he was. <laughs> they found some atoll somewhere near, you know, the Caribbean to leave him on. But I think there's been some great nominations, I have to say. They've all been very, very good, many of them uh, for the first time. But I think this week has been dominated, it has to be said, by Lindsay Hoyle. Oh, I knew yeah. it was does, Lindsay Hoyle. It, it has been. And Lindsay Hoyle, who Alex assures me will still be in a job by the time this goes out, yeah. uh, has won plank of the week. So well done, Lindsay. Uh, the mother of all parliaments. Um, some people are calling it something else this week. Um, thank you to Esther Kraku. Thank you, of course, to Peter Blatty. Thank you to Georgie Frost. Thank you to Alex Salmon. Uh, we'll be back, of course, same time next week. Uh, coming up, though, at 11.30, it's the world according to Mike Graham. Uh, we'll see you later.